Section One of Wheels, the First Cycle. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Newgate Novelist, Algie Pug, Eva Davis, and Nemo. Preface to Second Edition In Bad Taste the platitudinous multitude advance they tear their hair and speak with bated breath and some are young though prematurely aged and others old though desperately young sometimes they roar out biblical abuse at other times they wrap their ranting thoughts in the fair woven garment of hypocrisy or roll their silly eyes or uplifted thank god they are not like to publicans but most i love their favourite axiom that age is but a virtue youth a sin this line is gloomy and this view is false life is a thing of joy and platitudes oh to be simple now that spring is here play oranges and lemons nuts and may and sing and gamble through a joyous day when we were young we danced upon the hills in tall top hats and patent leather shoes to the wild music of a mandolin all decent youth should sing the rosary in a sweet simple untrained tenor voice or softly whistle songs of araby then would you grow to a malign old age watching your sons a cricket on the green and hear your daughter's cello in the dusk these are the joys the future holds in store ah we still live in sweet simplicity and hear the twittering of chaffinches we read our country life and worship punch a journal strong severe yet humorous full of clean humour and of simple fun containing charming jokes of rustic life displaying with pride their childish ignorance and ours life may be less complex ah well a mere two thousand years have slipped away and left us simple sweet barbarity the chaffinches still sing and still the church pursues its mission of repentant hope but you are young and youth is sad meanwhile the world's giant wheels revolve and flatten out the road for fate the path for destiny a myriad lives are but a grain of dust to mark a turning or the thought of one along this royal straight avenue of time from the dim splendour of the ages past decked out in golden plumes and wreathed with flowers on a triumphal car and with a cavalcade rides moloch god of blood and in his hand a fingered treatise on simplicity end of section this recording is in the public domain section two wheels by nancy cunard i sometimes think that all our thoughts are wheels rolling forever through the painted world moved by the cunning of a thousand clowns dressed paper-wise with blatant rounded masks that take their multicolored caravans from place to place and act and leap and sing catching the spinning hoops when cymbals clash and one is dressed as fate and one as death the rest that represent love joy and sin join hands in solemn stage learnt ecstasy while folly beats a drum with golden pegs 
and mocks that shrouded jester called despair the dwarves and other curious satellites voluptuous mouthed with slyly pointed steps strut in the circus while the people stare and some have sober faces white with chalk and roll the heavy wheels all through the streets of sleeping hearts with ponderance and noise like weary armies on a solemn march now in the scented gardens of the night where we are scattered like a pack of cards our words are turned to spokes that thoughts may roll and form a jangling chain around the world itself a fabulous wheel controlled by time over the slow incline of centuries so dreams and prayers and feelings born of sleep as well as all the sun-gilt pageantry made out of summer breezes and hot noons are in the great revolving of the spheres under the trampling of their chariot wheels end of section this recording is in the public domain section three the beginning by osbert sitwell great spheres of fire to which the sun is not past thundering round our world a golden mist the margin to the universe falls round the verges of our vision rocks ablaze leap upward to the sun or fall beneath the rush of our rapidity that seems catastrophe and not the joyous birth of yet another star the air is full of clashing colors full of sights and sounds too plain and loud for men to heed or hear the cosmic cries of pain that follow birth a multi-colored world the scorching heat surpasses all the equatorial days steam rises from the surface of the sea gigantic rainbow mists resemble forms that bring to mind strange elemental sprites exulting in the chaos of creation they glide above the tumult ridden sea which now is shaken as our autumn leaves great hollows open and reveal its depths devoid of any form of life or death then wave on wave it gathers strength again and shakes a mountain splits it to the base still weak from struggles as a newborn babe then night comes on and shows the flaming path of all the rocks that vainly seek the sun broad as the arch of space a myriad moons sail slowly by the sea the glowing world shows up the pallor of their ivory the din grows greater from the universe there rises up the smell of fire and iron not dreary like the smell of burnout things but like the smell of some gigantic forge cheerful of good intent and full of life now all the joyous cries of sea and earth the universal harmonies of birth rise up to haunt the slumber of their god end of section this recording is in the public domain section four the end by osbert sitwell round the great runes crawl those things of slime green ruins lichenous and scarred by moss an evil lichen that proclaims world doom like blood dried brown upon a dead man's face and nothing moves save those monstrosities armored in gray and of a monster size but now a thing passed through the cloying air with flap and clatter of its scaly wings as if the whole world echoed from some storm one scarce could see it in this dim green light till suddenly it swooped and made a dart and swept away 
one of those things of slime, just as a hawk might sweep upon its prey. Then there were horrid noises, cries of pain, which only made one feel a deep disgust. It seems as if the light grows dimmer yet, no radiance from the dreadful green above, only a lustrous light or iridescence, as if from off a carrion fly surrounds that vegetation which is never touched by any breeze. The air is thick and brings the tainted subtle sweetness of decay, where yonder lies the noisome river course, there shows a faintly phosphorescent glow. Long writhing bodies fall and twist and rise, and one can hear them playing in the mud. Upon the ruined walls there gleam and shine the track of those gray, vast monstrosities, as some gigantic snail had crawled along. All round the shining bushes waver lines, suggesting shadows, slight and gray, but full of that which makes one nigh to dead with fear. Watch how those awful shadows culminate and dance in one long wish to hurt the world, a world that now is past all agony. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. Section 5 Progress by Osbert Sitwell The city's heat is like a leaden pall. Its lowered lamps glow in the midnight air like mammoth orange moths that flit and flare through the dark tapestry of night. The tall black houses crush the creeping beggars down who walk beneath and think of breezes cool, of silver bodies bathing in a pool, or trees that whisper in some far small town whose quiet nursed them when they thought that gold was merely metal, not a grave of mold in which men bury all that's fine and fair. When they could chase the jeweled butterfly through the green bracken scented lanes or sigh for all the future held so rich and rare when though they knew it not their baby cries were lovely as the jeweled butterflies end of section this recording is in the public domain Section 6. Prelude by Osbert Sitwell The valleys that were known in sunlit hours are vast and vague as seas, wan as the blackthorn flowers that quiver in the first spring-scented breeze, far as the frosted hollows of the moon. The sighing woods are still, wrapped in their age-long boon of mystery and sleep a naked hill loud and discordant looms against the sky and little lights like stars break the monotony of blue and silver black and gray strange bars of light resemble silver masks and leer across the forest lane Tall nettles, rank from rain, sent to all the woods with some ancestral fear. Trees rustle by the water. A voice sings faintly to ward off fright. The water breathes pale rings of sad wan light. Faintly they grow, then merge into the night. The last poor twisted echo takes to flight end of section this recording is in the public domain
Section 7 Perrault Old by Osbert Sitwell The harvest moon is at its height. The evening primrose greets its light with grace and joy, then opens up the mimic moon within its cup. Tall trees as high as Babel Tower throw down their shadows to the flower. Shadows that shiver seem to see an ending to infinity. The pagan pan has now unbent and stoops to sniff the night stock scent that brings a memory sad and old when he was young and free and bold to play his pipe in forests black or follow in some goat herd's track who, filled with panic fear, then flees through all the terror-threatening trees. Huge silver moths, like ghosts of flowers, hover about the warm, dark bowers and wait to breathe the lime tree scent that perfumed many a compliment addressed to beauties young and gay, their faces powdered by the ray of that same moon that looks upon their dreary lichen-covered tomb. The dryads throw their water wide and strive to stem the surging tide that dashes up the fountain base, hoping to catch the moon's pale face. A game now played without a score for three good centuries or more, and all the earth smells warm and sweet, a fitting place for fairy feet. But now a figure, white and frail, leaps out into the moonlight pale, from wakeful thoughts, old age, and grief, he finds in the strange world relief. Yet all the shadow, scent, and sound, poor Perot's mind do sad confound. Watch how he dances to the moon, while singing some faint, fragrant tune. But Perot now is tired and sad, remembers all the evenings mad. He spent with that fantastic band, so gaily wandering o'er the land. They all are dead, and at an end, and he is left without a friend. For though the hours can pass away, poor Perrault still must grieve and stay. Upon the dewy grass he lies, the perfumes stir strange memories. Once more he hears a laughing cry that brings great teardrops to his eye. That step, that look, that voice, that smile. Ah, they've been buried a long while. And who's the man in pantaloons? And he who sings such festive tunes? Why, it's that laughing man of sin, that roguish rascal harlequin. Forgiving Perrault hides his head deep in the grass and mourns the dead, forgetting all the pranks they played and how he was himself betrayed. The butterfly lives but one day, but Perrault still seems doomed to stay. He falls asleep there, tragic, white and wakes to find the bleak daylight. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. Section 8. Night by Osbert Sitwell All the dim terrors dwelling far below, interred by many thousand years of life, Arise to revel in this evil dark, The wail forlorn of dogs that mourn for men. A shuffling footfall on a creaking board, The handle of a door that shakes and turns, A door that opens slightly, not enough, The rustling sigh of silk along a floor, The knowledge of being watched by one long dead, by something 
that is outside nature's pale the unheard sounds that haunt an ancient house the feel of one who listens in the dark listens to that which happened long ago or what will happen after we are dust the awful waiting for a near event or for a crash to rend the silence deep enveloping a house that always waits a house that whispers to itself and weeps the murmur of the yew or woodland cries a sombre note of music on the breeze a shudder from the ivy that entwines the horror that is felt within its grip the sound of prowling things that walk abroad the nauseous flapping of night's bat-like wings these are the signs the gods have given us to know the limit of our days and powers end of section this recording is in the public domain section nine twentieth century harlequinade by osbert sitwell fate malign dotard weary from his days too old for memory yet craving pleasure now finds the night too long and bitter cold reminding him of death the sun too hot the beauty of the universe he hates yet stands regarding earthly carnivals the clatter and the clang of car and train the hurrying throng of homeward going men the cries of children color of the streets their whistling and their shouting and their joy the lights the trees the fanes and towers of churches thanksgiving for the sun the moon the earth the labor love and laughter of our lives he thinks they mock his age with ribaldry from far within his eon battered brain well up those wanton wistful images that first beguiled the folk of bergamo now like himself degraded and distressed they sink to ignominy but the clown remains reminder of their former state and still earns hurricanes of hoarse applause this dotard now decides to end the earth wrecked by its own and his futility recalls the formula of world broad mirth a senseless hitting of those unaware unnecessary breaking of their chattels the pantomime of life is near its close the stage is strewn with ends and bits of things with mortals maimed or crucified and left to gape at endless horror through eternity the face of fate is wet with other paint than that incarnadines the human clown yet still he waves a bladder red as gold and still he gaily hits about with it and still the dread revealing limelight plays till the whole sickened scene becomes a fire antic himself falls on the funeral pyre of twisted tortured mortifying men end of section this recording is in the public domain section ten therefore is the name of it called babel by osbert sitwell and still we stood and stared far down into that ember-glowing town which every shaft and shock of fate 
had shorn unto its base too late came carelessly serenity now torn and broken houses gaze unto the rat infested maze that once sent up rose silver haze to mingle through eternity the outlines once so strongly wrought of city walls are now a thought or jest unto the dead who fought foundation for futurity the shimmering sands where once there played children with painted pail and spade are drearily desolate afraid to meet night's dark humanity whose silver cool remakes the dead and lays no blame on any head for all the havoc fire and lead that fell upon us suddenly when all we came to know is good gave way to evil's fiery flood and monstrous myths of iron and blood seem to obscure god's clarity deep sunk in sin this tragic star sinks deeper still and wages war against itself strewn all the seas with victims of a world disease and we are left to drink the lees of babel's direful prophecy end of section this recording is in the public domain section eleven the lament of the mole catcher by osbert sitwell an old sad man who catches moles went lonely down the lane all lily green were the lanes and knolls but sorrow numbed his brain he paid no heed to flower or weed as he went his lonely way no note he heard from any bird that sang that sad spring day i trapped the moles for forty years that could not see the sky i reckoned not blind blood or tears and the lord has seen them die for forty years i've sought to slay the small the dumb the blind but now the lord has made me pay and i am like their kind i cannot see or lane or hill or flower or bird or moon lest life shall lay me lower still o lord come take it soon end of section this recording is in the public domain section twelve tears by osbert sitwell silence o'erwhelms a melody of night then slowly drips onto the woods that sigh for their past vivid vernal ecstasy the branches and the leaves let in the light in patterns woven against the paler sky create mysterious gothic tracery between those high dark pillars that affright poor weary mortals who are wandering by silence drips on the woods like sad faint rain making each frail tired sigh a sob of pain each drop that falls a hollow painted tear such as are shed by pueros when they fear black clouds may crush their silver lord to death the world is waxen and the wind's least breath would make a hurricane of sound the earth smells of the hoarded sunlight that gave birth to the gold glowing radiance of that leaf which falls to bury from our sight its grief end of poem this recording is in the public domain section thirteen black mass by osbert sitwell the atmosphere is charged with hidden things thoughts that are waiting wanting to revive primeval terrors from their present graves those half thoughts hidden from the mind of man the fear of those bright countless stars 
that shine celestially serene on summer nights and those too far for human eye to see that make men feel as small and ill at ease as do the thoughts of immortality the fear of seas that stretch beyond our sight unspoilt by any memory of a ship strange silent seas that lap the unknown shores of some far distant undiscovered land the curious fear of caves and horrid depths where lurk those monsters that we hide away and bury in our self-complacency the dread of all that waits unseen yet heard the fear of moonlight falling on a face the sound of sobs at night the fear of laughter the misty terror lurking in a wood which night has wrapped in her soft robe of sighs the horror that is felt where man is not in lonely lands all dotted with squat trees that seem to move in the grey twilight breeze or sit and watch you like malicious cripples intent on every movement every thought where stones like evil fungi raise their bulk covered with lichen older than the hills a warning for the ages yet to come stones that have seen the sun and moon and stars deflect their course for very weariness these fears are gathered pressed into a room vibrating with the wish to damage man to put a seal upon his mind and soul these fears are fused into a living flame the room is filled with men of evil thoughts and some poor timid ones on evil bent they stand in anxious ghastly expectation the guttering light is low and follows them with subtle shadows tall beyond belief vast elemental shapes that make men feel like dusty atoms blown by wayward winds about the world shadows that sway and swing and sigh and talk as if themselves alive small shadows cringe about the room incredibly grotesque and dwarf-like in their attitudes malignant mocking things that caper round triumphant heralds of an evil reign secret and swift they flit about the wall noiseless they drag their feet about the floor and murmur subtle infamies of love sweet sounding threats and bribes and baleful thoughts yet all are waiting evilly alert yet all are waiting watching for events silence has ceased to be a negative becomes a thing of substance fills the room and clings like ivy to the listening walls the flickering light flares up then gutters out the shadows seem to shiver and expand to active evil things that breathe and live but now they whirl and dance in ecstasy the highest moment of their mass is near we only feel the swaying of the shades and evil bars of music that escape our consciousness though we have known it long the music of the evil things of night scarcely remembered from some dim vast world the things that haunted us when we were young and nearer to our past realities like scaly snakes the hymn to evil writhes through the subconscious basis of our mind eddies of icy breath or hot as flame twist into all the corners of the room filling our veins with fire like red-hot iron and wicked as the prince of evil things faintly his glowing presence is revealed to us amid the chorus of his satellites the consummation of our awful hopes end of section this recording is in the public domain section 14 the carnivals of peace by nancy cunard had i a clearer brain imagination a flowing pen and better ending rhymes 
a firmer heart devoid of hesitation unbiased happiness these barren times with pleasure in this discontented life forgetfulness of sorrow and of pain triumphant victory on fear and strife daring to look behind and look again ahead for all the slowly coming days see nothing but the carnivals of peace forget the dreams of death and other ways men have imagined for their own decrease i'd write a song to conquer all our tears lasting forever through the folding years end of section this recording is in the public domain section 15 destruction by nancy cunard i saw the people climbing up the street maddened with war and strength and thought to kill and after followed death who held with skill his torn rags royally and stamped his feet the fires flamed up and burnt the serried town most where the poorer humbler houses were death followed with proud feet and smiling stare and the mad crowds ran madly up and down and many died and hid in unfound places in the black ruins of the frenzied night yet death still followed in his surplice white and streaked in imitation of their faces but in the morning men began again to mock death laughing at their bitter pain end of section this recording is in the public domain. Section 16. Sonnet by Nancy Cunard. This is no time for prayers or words or song. With folded hands we sit and slowly stare. The world's old wheels go round, and like a fair, the clowns and peep shows ever pass along our brains are dumb with cold and worn with strife and every day has lingered on our faces marking its usual course and weary paces with cruel cunning care and sober knife fate like a sculptor working with great tools now moulds his genius into clever ways our souls are cut and torn all for his praise when his great masterpiece is praised by fools yet winter comes like death and takes the pride from his strong hands that held us till we died end of section this recording is in the public domain Section 17. Remorse by Nancy Cunard. I have been wasteful, wanton, foolish, bold, and loved with grasping hands and lustful eyes, all through the hectic days and summer skies, and through the endless streets, but now am old and ill and bad content with discontent enduring the discomfort and the blows with sunken head and heart that shaking goes resigned to sit and wait in punishment a martyr without claim a parody of classic crowned apostles and sweet saints now praised in marble and in gorgeous paints or singing in loud scores of harmony i sit ashamed and silent in this room while the wet streets go gathering in their gloom end of section this recording is in the public domain section 18 
Section 18 Uneasiness by Nancy Cunard Tonight I hear a thousand evil things Between the panels and the mouldering floor Small bitter things with hearts and maybe wings That curse their bondage yet entreat for more Free wicked time and space to hurt our lives And bring unthought of ill luck to us all Undreamed horrors, stories of old wives, Armies of corpses hid behind the wall, That creep and grind and tear each other's souls, And fight with devils in a horrid tongue, Making sleep flee away beyond the poles. All this I know, although the night is young, And lingering breathless, full of timid fear, Waiting in terror for their hour that's near. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. Section 19 From the Train by Nancy Cunard Smokestacks, coal stacks, haystacks, slack, colorless, scentless, pointless, dull, Railways, highways, roadways, black. Grantham, Birmingham, Leeds, and Hull. Steamers, passengers, convoys, trains. Merchandise traveling over the sea. Smut-filled streets and factory lanes what can these ever mean to me end of section this recording is in the public domain section 20 processions by edith sitwell within the long black avenues of night go pageants of delight with masks of glass, the night is stained with wine, Hair lifted like a vine, And all the coloured curtains of the air were fluttered. Passing there, the sounds seemed warring suns, And music flowed as blood, The masked lamps showed tall houses, Light had gilded like despair, Black windows gaping there. Through all the rainbow spaces of our laughter, those pageants followed after. The negress night, within her house of glass, watched the processions pass. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. Section 21. Gaiety by Edith Sitwell. Blow out the candles. Let the dance begin. Already, pale as sin, the candles weep and pry like living things. They dance who have no wings. More vast and black than endless sleep, this room. Time beats his empty drum, whose hollow sound is echoed in our eyes. Deep wells where no moon lies. A crumpled paper mask hides every face, creased to a smile of grace. Their eyelids gilded, so the bitter tears make music for men's ears. These masks, some coloured like an August moon, or white, as sands that swoon within time's hourglass, some as grey as rain, still mimic joy and pain. Thin pointed rags and tags edge our attire. Bright plume or tongues of fire, whose painted laughter cracks the gilded sky of this flat empery, that has no soil where any flower may root, no rest for weary foot, but endless leagues of mirror, such the ground that no horizons bound, carved topaz water, sound a mirror seems, oh, nakedness of dreams beneath the blinding radiance of hot skies, where no sun lives or dies. Now that the dusty creaking curtain, 
Day is folded, laid away. Each masked dancer is both pierced heart and dream. It's poniard. Small winds creep from infinity. A flame, our blown hair. White as shame. That seed of worlds, the stars, are naught but blown red tinsel from a clown. The candles, living things to dance and pry. Out, hard reality. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. Section 22. Theus in Heaven by Edith Sitwell When you lay dying fast, you said, and weeping, were not comforted. Look through this paper world. I see the lights of heaven burn like gold the other side, and souls are sold for these, yet only flesh sold we. And then you died and went to bliss. I'm curious now to know if love is really heaven, where you rove, your kind of love, or mine, Thais? And is there still the clinging mud? I think it drowned your soul like wine. And do the stars like street lamps shine, gilding the gutters where you stood? And lighting up your small face where, thin powder like a trail of dust, shows the mortality of lust still black as hissing rain your hair your body had become your soul Theus, do spirits crumble whole end of section this recording is in the public domain section 23 a Lamentation by Edith Sitwell 1. Our heartstrings were the music of the suns, when their strong youth comes freshened from deep seas. We were the perfumed portals of the dawn, the singing gardens of the Pleiades, the vineyards of the world, our heavy locks, when all the fruits of summer shout for joy. Our eyelids were the chambers of the south. The gold light dripped therefrom like frankincense. Then madness blew on us, a mighty wind. The palaces of light are overthrown. And broken lie the rainbows, their great harps, with burning music muted by the dust. Our thoughts, strong horses, that unfettered ran within the golden pastures of the day. Then madness reigned them, she has drunk their strength, as summer drains the strongest river's pride. We built new worlds with our immortal kiss, then madness swept like time across our worlds. And when we spoke, all space broke into flower till madness came like winter withering and time was but the beat of heart to heart till madness stopped the heartbeat of the world bull-throated now the fires of madness blast all space becomes one golden wheel of flame the agony of endless moons and suns that giant red hole that was the ancient sea is filled with wreckage of the ruined sky. The world's vast walls reel blindly, then collapse. 2. Pull down the heavens like a sackcloth pall to spread upon our faces sealed with night. Pull down the sun and burn the fiery moon. The fabric of the air is torn apart. The world is dead, there is no world at all. The light is dead, there shall be no more light. Pull down the heavens like a sackcloth pall. Crush down the beat of time, it was my heart. From Saul End of Section
This recording is in the public domain. Section 24 Antic Hay by Edith Sitwell How like a lusty satyr the hot sun doth in his orbit run O'er rivers and the light blue hills of noon, And where the white still moon sleeps in the lovely woodlands of the light, Made drunken with his might, like flames the goat-foot satyrs leap and fling The blossomed beams of spring. The oreads leave their swan-like fountains, bells of foam, and dark wood-wells, and grasses where the pale dew lovelorn lies, and, like an echo, dies. The river-gods are tossing their blue manes, still wet with brine. The reins lie loosely on their plunging horses. Earth shakes with the storm of mirth and all the cloudy castles of the air are bathed with radiance. There, beneath dark chestnut trees, King Pan doth sport with all his horned court, their goat feet clattering to the oaten tune that cools the heat of noon like water gurgling. Hoops all wreathed with flowers, wild as the dew-pale hours, the clowny satyrs dance the antic hay. They butt with horns, and sway, while laughing leaves, like smitten cymbals, thrill their sunburnt dance, until the light falls, like a rain of panicked leaves, through the gold heart of eaves. O'er misty fields, mild Diane's old faint horn bloweth a sound forlorn. Then from their hives, with palest flowers bedight, the yellow bees take flight, whirling where old silenus tries to sing unto his horned king feeding upon gold freckled strawberries and sting the poor fat fool until he cries end of section this recording is in the public domain section twenty five the drunkard by edith sitwell this black tower drinks the blinding light. Strange windows, livid white, tremble beneath the curse of God. Yet living weeds still nod to the huge sun, a devil's eye that tracks the souls that die. The clock beats like the heart of doom within the narrow room, and whispering with some ghastly air, the curtains float and stir. But still, she never speaks a word. I think she hardly heard when I, with reeling footsteps, came, and softly spoke her name. But yet she does not sleep. Her eyes still watch in wide surprise the thirsty knife that pitied her. But those lids never stir, though creeping fear still gnaws like pain the hollow of her brain. She must have some sly plan, the cheat, to lie so still. The beat that once throbbed like a muffled drum with fear to hear me come, now never sounds when I creep nigh. Oh, she was always sly. And if, despite her, I dared steal behind her bed and feel with fumbling fingers for her heart, ere I could touch the smart, once more, wild shriek on shriek would tear the dumb and shuddering air. And still, she never speaks to me. She only smiles to see how, in dark corners, secret sly, newborn eternity, all spider-like, doth spin and cast strange threads to hold time fast. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. Section 26 The Mother by Edith Sitwell 1. Our dreams create the babes we bear, Our beauty goes to make them fair, We give them all we have of good, Our blood to drink, our hearts for food. And in our souls they lie and rest, Until upon their mother's breast 
so innocent and sweet they lie. They live to curse us, then they die. When he was born, it seemed the spring had come again with birds to sing, and blossoms dancing in the sun, where streams released from winter run. His sunlit hair was all my gold, his loving eyes my wealth untold. All heaven was hid within the breast, whereon my child was laid to rest. He grew to manhood. Then one came, false-hearted as hell's blackest shame, to steal my child from me, and thrust the soul I loved down to the dust. Her hungry wicked lips were red, as that dark blood my son's hand shed. Her eyes were black as hell's own night, her ice-cold breast was winter white. I had put by a little gold to bury me when I was cold, her fanged wanton kiss to buy my son's love willed that I should die. The gold was hid beneath my bed, so little, and my weary head was all the guard it had. They lie so quiet and still who soon must die. He stole to kill me while I slept, the little son, who never wept, but that I kissed his tears away so fast, his weeping seemed but play. So light his footfall, yet I heard its echo in my heart, and stirred from out my weary sleep to see my child's face bending over me. The wicked knife flashed serpent-wise, yet I saw nothing but his eyes and heard one little word he said go echoing down among the dead. 2. They say the dead may never dream, but yet I heard my pierced heart scream his name within the dark. They lie who say the dead can ever die. For in the grave I may not sleep for dreaming that I hear him weep, and in the dark my dead hands grope in search of him. O oh, barren hope! I cannot draw his head to rest deep down upon my wounded breast. He gave the breast that fed him well to suckle the small worms of hell. The little wicked thoughts that fed upon the weary, helpless dead, they whispered o'er my broken heart, they stuck their fangs deep in the smart. The child she bore with bloody sweat and agony has paid his debt. Through that bleak face the stark winds play, the crows have chased his soul away. His body is a blackened rag upon the tree, a monstrous flag. Thus one worm to the other saith, those slow mean servitors of death. They chuckling said, your soul grew and blind with anguish, is the shrieking wind that blows the flame that never dies about his empty lidless eyes. I tore them from my heart. I said, the life-blood that my son's hand shed, that from my broken heart outburst, I'd give again to quench his thirst. He did no sin, but cold blind earth the body was that gave him birth. All mine, all mine the sin, the love I bore him was not deep enough. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. Section 27. The King of China's Daughter by Edith Sitwell The King of China's Daughter, she never would love me, though I hung my cap and bells upon her nutmeg tree, for oranges and lemons, the stars in bright blue air, I stole them long ago, my dear, were dangling there. The moon, she gave me silver pence, the sun did give me gold and both together softly blew, and made my porridge cold. But the King of China's daughter pretended not to see, when I hung my cap and bells upon her nutmeg tree. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. Section 28. Nebuchadnezzar the King by Edith and Osbert Sitwell 
the satyrs howl beside the paven pools their cloven hoofs scorch yellow marks like moons upon the vivid green their mad hilarity makes desolation yet more desolate and all the yearning of the summer trees falls on to them consumes their veins with fire they leap about and crown with drunken flowers the horned heads now deeply slumbering time flies away and shakes the passing world or throws the temples of the morning air great crimson comets fall like bursting grapes the deserts cry unto the moon for rain to cool the fever of their silver sand and fainting winds bear far and wide the moan of beasts that perish neath the ashen sky the satyrs dance to these strange harmonies and swim and splash among the water pools but death a waveless sea rolls ever on its waters lap the silent palace walls whose windows now are lit with lunacy throwing out gleams to falsify the world the king raised up his mighty limbs from sleep his stature great as any cedar tree his limbs like branches stretching far and wide his face as rugged as the centuries that still retain the memory of him mad his speech is dull and thick comes from afar as if his soul had fled to other shores before my majesty the sun is burnt sheds its mute ashes to a morning world nineveh is great and babylon my kingdom i rule the world i am a mighty god death listens at strange gates the corridors are long as time and straight but full of fear the palace whispers to itself and waits the king went forth into the outer black resembling the mockery of his mind he fled up to the hills away from thought the velvet of his purple robe was caught by thorns and stinging branches goad him on his royal hands are brown with blood and dirt his gilded sandals and high crown of gold are dull and dusty far below there lies great babylon whose domes repeat the shape of that same heaven that would crush them down great towers like lamentations edge the sky tattered and torn by all those subtle shapes but death the waveless sea has turned back walks with the king and inundates the hills great is nineveh and babylon my kingdom i rule the world i am a mighty god why do the satyrs quit their water pools is it my majesty that frightens them yet am i desolate alone with pan to face the horrors of unholy nights why do the satyrs quit their water pools and nimbly run along the mountain slopes down to the sea that rises up to meet them and opens out to show them its contents there at the ocean bottom lies the sun the cause and reason of my discontent the sun that always envied me in vain and tried to burn the world that worshipped me the satyrs know how great a king am i they go to drown the sun in fathoms deep or burn it with its own black impious hate the foremost has it see them tear it up the sun is burned before my majesty sheds its mute ashes to a morning world nineveh is great and babylon my kingdom i rule the world 
I am a mighty god. A diadem of stars upon my head, my body clothed in the black robe of night. Eternally I walk the scented hills, treading on flowers that deck Apollo's crown, and meet my brother Pan, who walks with me. Just now I heard him speaking in my ear. Great is the king, none greater neath the stars. Great is the king, the king of Babylon. Great is the king, the Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. Section 29. Three Poems by Arnold James. One. There was a peace at eve, no other hour knows of. The east, a duskin tapestry of yellow light, woven with feathers from the wings of birds in flight, curtained the presence of an unseen power. I stood between deep ranks of pillaring pine in a small glade, and up above a cupola more deep, recessed into the blueness of the sky. All wrapped in sleep, save the unresting vigil of starshine. And then I called on God. The pine tops kissed. The sky was suddenly disturbed. Vague eddies in the air scattered night perfumes. Cloud sheets raced. Grass rustled everywhere. Nature made preparation for that mighty tryst. 2. Clutching thine hand, sweet death, my tranquil friend, and nestling close to thee, I shall have power to rest uninjured by the transient hour, knowing my end. I shall be held above the eddying tide into a sunlit quiet, and thence hide, with but an outstretched palm the wearying crowd, twixt whom in God a gulf unknownly wide is fixed, to drown their little nesses loud. Blow forth, Death's herald, from thy silver horn strains sweeter far than birds a song at morn. 3. 1. All day he moved not, lying low amid the cool, fresh, odorous grass. He heard the trill of water leaping, somewhere shadow hid, and in unfettered rapture drank his fill of deep rose odor, till sleep stole unbid upon him with the music of the rill. 2. He woke in darkness. Twixt him and the skies darted the black things of the middle night, while all around broke shrill and tragic cries, as of hope dead and fancy put to flight. And somewhere, hidden from his burning eyes, cold dropping water set his heart affright. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. Section 30. Five Poems by Iris Tree. 1. There are songs enough of love, of joy, of grief, roads to the sunset, alleys to the moon, poems of the red rose and the golden leaf, fantastic fairy and gay ballad tune. The long road unto nothing I will sing, Sing on one note, monotonous and dry, Of sameness, calmness, and the years that bring No more emotion than the fear to die. Grey house, grey house, and after that grey house, Another house as grey and steep and still, An old cat tired of playing with a mouse, A sick child tired of chasing down the hill. 
shuffle and hurry idle feet and slow grim face and merry face so ugly all why do you hurry where is there to go why are you shouting who is there to call lovers still kissing feverish to drain the last juice from the shrivelled fruit of lust a black umbrella held up in the rain the raindrops making patterns in the dust if this distaste i hold for fools is such shall i not spit upon myself as well do i not eat and drink and smile as much do i not fatten also in this hell sadness and joy if they were melted up things that were great upon the fires of time drop but as soup in the accustomed cup settle in stagnance trickle into grime war's passion's art that fire a man or two and set him like a pilgrim on his way with beauty's face before him what of you priest butcher scholar dullard in that day the dullard masses that no god can save if i were god to rise and strike you down and break your churches in an angry wave and make a furious bonfire of your town god in a coloured globe alone and still embroidering wonders with a fearless brain on looms of spaces measureless to fill the empty air with passion and with pain emblazon all the heavens with desire and wisdom delved for in the depth of time thoughts sculptured mountainous and fancy's fire caught in the running swiftness of a rhyme passion high pedestalled pangs turned to treasure perfected and undone and built afresh with concentrated agony and pleasure if i were god and not an ounce of flesh two now is the evening dipped knee-deep in blood and the dun hills stand fearful in their places cunning and sin we shuffle down the streets with burdens of vainglory on our backs spinning with spider hands the miser's web or sitting placid gay and fat with ease but out beyond the armies of the world march doomwards to the rhythm of the drum under the thirsting sun death holds his state his skeleton hands are filled with scarlet spoil he stands on flaming ramparts waving high the ensign of decay all his bones are dressed with livid roses all his pillars black are girt in ashen poppies and on dust he raises up his awful golden throne oh your fierce shrieks have fainted on deaf ears your tears have flowed on feet of carven stone your blood is spilt for the boiling pot of god where good and evil mix and all your rage is but a thin smoke wafted in his face. Three. Mouth of the dust I kiss, corruption absolute. Worm, that shall come at last to be my paramour, envenomed, unseen wanderer who alone is mute, yet greater than gods or heroes that have gone before for you i sheave the harvest of my hair for you the whiteness of my flesh my passion's valour for you i throw upon the grey screen of the air my prism-like conceptions my gigantic colour for you the delicate hands that fashion to make great clay and white paper plant a tongue in silence for you the battle frenzy and the might of hate science for giving wounds and healing science for you the heart's wild love beauty long care virginity passionate womanhood perfected wholeness for you the unborn child that i prepare you flabby boneless brainless senseless 
soulless. 4. For my delight, wind in the chestnut trees moving incessant against a silvern sky, clouds raveled and untorn, swept like the sea's insane confusion and their ceaseless sigh, glamour of coloured flowers, the sensuous bees moaning, gold-coated, and the butterfly tossed into arabesques upon the breeze, the purple eyelid of the bright sun's eye as he lies sleeping in his luxuries, with jewels and with bells and subtle dye beauty has strung them, has embroidered these a cloak of payment for my flatteries. Five. The door has clanged behind me. I have left the pleasure house where I have lingered long. The street is chill in early morning. Strange, pale-lipped, anemic. Where to take my way? North and south it goes. I have no aim, no great equipment for my journeying. But, like an outcast on a desert strand, I stand and face the long horizon's line. So feels the young moon slung into the sky upon the fainting shoulders of the day. So feels the swan of evening all alone drifting across the waters of the sky. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. Section 31. Zeppelins by Iris Tree. 1. The startling thunder bursting from a gun. How swift runs fear, quick silver that is freed. Now every muscle weakens, every pulse is set at gallop pace, and every nerve stretched, taut with terror and a mad revolt. The fear of death, the longing still to live, live in a vain world racked with hundred pains, limp in a dull street housed with crumbling dreams, only to breathe and eat and sleep and love a little longer. Oh, a little year! Prayers deep entombed rise up in resurrection. The silence and the void are closing round, Worms creep in dreadful hunger from the ground to drag our bodies wonder from the light. Though all the world shall fall into their cells and lie within their larders, shelf on shelf, yet will I scape them on the topmost hill. Yet must I stay to spite them, only I. 2. Leaving the dun river with hurried tapping feet and up the long, uncomfortable street with eyes uninterested, yet forced to see and read the dingy notices, once sharp and bright with greed, now drear with want, that swear the Queen's Hotel and Brown's Hotel and King's are doing well. A soldier and a beggar mock me as I go. The light steals after me, emerging slow and pale from the dim alleys, shadow-crouched. I hurried by the drunkard as he slouched from lamp-post unto lamp-post. Then I saw, caught in the mirror of a tailor's door, my own reflection as I hurried past, my flaring colours and my face aghast, the scarlet tassel of my hat that hung limp as a spent flame, and my skirt that clung about my knees and fluttered at the back. An injured moth with sulphur stripes and black. My bag flamboyant as a pillar box. My frayed gilt fringe of hair and tarnished locks. Jagged and crude and swift I seemed to pass. 
painted too brightly on that temperate glass an omnibus from sudden corner reels silence lies mangled underneath the wheels end of section this recording is in the public domain section 32 home thoughts in levanti by e windham tennant green gardens in levanti soldiers only know the street where the mud is churned and splashed about by battle-wending feet and yet beside one stricken house there is a glimpse of grass look for it when you pass beyond the church whose pitted spire seems balanced on a strand of swaying stone and tottering brick two roofless ruins stand and here among the wreckage where the back wall should have been we found a garden green the grass was never trodden on the little path of gravel was overgrown with celandine no other folk did travel along its weedy surface but the nimble-footed mouse running from house to house so all among the vivid blades of soft and tender grass we lay nor heard the limber wheels that pass and ever pass in noisy continuity until their stony rattle seems in itself a battle at length we rose up from this ease of tranquil happy mind and searched the garden's little length some new plaisance to find and there some yellow daffodils and jasmine hanging high did rest the tired eye the fairest and most fragrant of the many sweets we found was a little bush of daphne flower upon a mossy mound and so thick were the blossoms set and so divine the scent that we were well content hungry for spring i bent my head the perfume fanned my face and all my soul was dancing in that little lovely place dancing with a measured step from wrecked and shattered towns away upon the downs i saw green banks of daffodil slim poplars in the breeze great tan-brown hairs in gusty march a-courting on the lees and meadows with their glittering streams and silver scurrying dace home what a perfect place end of section this recording is in the public domain section thirty three song by e windham tennant how shall i tell you of the freedom of the downs you who love the dusty life and durance of great towns and think the only flowers that please embroider ladies' gowns. How shall I tell you? How shall I tell you of the Avon's sweeping flow, with his pollards like old henchmen in a sage and solemn row, and the silvery water cuts that shine when timey breezes blow? How shall I tell you? How shall I tell you of the roads that stretch away like streamers from a dancing pole in the tripsome month of May? For what care you for aught beside your porto and tokay? How shall I tell you? How shall I tell you how sweet it is to lie upon the cool and springy turf and gaze into the sky? But it would only crease your vest and set your hair awry. I shall not tell you. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. Section 35. Reincarnation by E. Wyndham Tennant. I too remember distant golden days when even my soul was young. I see the sand whirl in a blinding pillar towards the band of orange skyline neath a turquoise blaze. Some burnt out sky spread o'er a glistening land, and slim brown jargoning men in blue and gold. I know it all so well. I understand the ecstasy of worship, ages old. Hear the first truth. 
the great far-seeing soul is ever in the humblest husk i see how each succeeding section takes its toll in fading cycles of old memory and each new life the next life shall control until perfection reach eternity end of section this recording is in the public domain section thirty five li tai pe drinks and drowns by sir cheverell sitwell the spray splashes on the petals of the anemone creasing the water to a mesh of magic circles moving outwards the petals shake like the notes of a woman singing then li tai pe lifts back his cup and the red scimitar goes back to its sheath the magical rings move further away till they shake the ivory towers of the water lilies now as a finger shuts the notes of a flute the petals fold together then li tai pe with reeling mind sees the moon as an ivory mask hung from the belt of fate the histrion with such a mask the princesses will deem him of the dragon blood he jumps to catch it the moon-stained water runs into his mouth with open arms he sinks and through the jade-cold water seeks his diadem end of section this recording is in the public domain Section 36 A Picture by Victor Tate Perone She sat within the dappling shade That flickered o'er the forest glade The listening birches shadows made In that still place there was no stir About her fell the hair of her Heavy with aloes and with myrrh a golden chain her waist confined closed were her eyes as she were blind her robe was all with crimson lined with twisted cords about the hem her wrists were twined with many a gem her neck was like a lily stem about her feet a dragon slept his head upon her lap she kept and while she guarded it she wept Blind, anguished tears went dropping down Upon the dragon's glassy crown Upon the margin of her gown Tall columbines grew mid the grass Between them shadow mice did pass With soundless feet Pass and repass And over all the silence lay It seemed the evening of the day it seemed the hour when all men pray so sate she still this prisoned maid within the lonely forest glade sate tending well the dragon's head was she alive and is she dead end of section this recording is in the public domain Section 37 A Dirge by Victor Tate Perone Thou art no longer here No longer shall we see thy face But in that other place Where may be heard the roar of the world Rushing down the want ways of the stars And the silver bars of heaven's gate Shine soft and clear thou mayest wait no longer shall we see thee walking in the crowded streets but where the ocean of the future beats against the floodgates of the present swirling to this earth another birth thou mayest have another arcady may thee receive not here thou dost remain thou art gone far away 
where at the portals of the day the hours ever dance in ring a silvern footed throng while time looks on and seraphs stand choiring an endless strain on either hand thou canst return no more not as the happy time of spring comes after winter burgeoning on wood and wold in folds of living green for thou art dead our tears we shed in vain for thou dost pace another shore untroubled now end of section this recording is in the public domain Section 38. The Lady of Shalott by Victor Tate Perone. She singeth as she lieth in the barge. She sang, Ah, now at length I see the havens of eternity. The golden houses, one and all, peer o'er the high embattled wall, where maidens, with calm holy eyes bear lily flowers of paradise for ever knowing naught of death and little of this world beneath they have forgotten what they knew before their souls were born anew soon shall i even be as they before the ending of the day sure it shall be my part to stand with lily flowers in mine hand in a white robe and my gold head with roses shall be garlanded with deathless roses see the skies unfold the angelic ecstasies see the high throne the blessed saints ah oh god my god my spirit faints seeing these things a crown of bliss thou givest to me giving this that i may see the courts of heaven open before me sure forgiven now all my sins must be for i dear lord sinned never wittingly save this i did on Lancelot's face I looked with love. Grant me thy grace. Grant me thy grace. Soon comes the night, short night, but drear. Then the light cloud-builded wells of paradise beholden by the angel's eyes. Dear Lord of life, I am forgiven my spirit scales the walls of heaven and falls before god's feet at length i can behold him in his strength and glorious might and majesty o thou that art eternity once ere i die and be forgot i pray to thee for lancelot that he may know me in the wall a lilied maiden like them all and grant o lord that through the shade of death i may pass unafraid for those dear for whom i should pray lord care thou for them every day and guard from danger every night her voice rose higher ah the fight is over now the brazen gates stand wide for me the porter waits o havens of eternity ye open wide your doors to me i wandering sinning and forlorn weary and sad up through the torn mantle of cloud my soul ascends once once again before life ends commend to god on high my kin on earth before i enter in safe in the sanctuaried wall a lilied maid among them all end of section this recording is in the public domain
Section 39. Envious Youth by Helen Rudum. 1916. I am not old enough to claim the privilege of years, to sit apart and say to youth, now watch my nodding wisdom, pay reverence to that you cannot see has any claim to reverence but age. I am not old enough to say to youth, I too once felt like you, but now the years sit heavy on my shoulders, therefore you are wrong. I cannot fold my hands, and having lived my life, count with uneasy eyes the heavy passing hours, nursing each minute with unceasing care, lest an unwary movement snatch a few from me. For I am young, and in my glad young veins the blood runs freely. I seize each passing hour and fling it gaily where its fellows lie, and care not what old age doth call that heap, the past, the present, or to be. Why should I care? All time is mine, or should be. But wise age has held the world, and turned it round and round, until the sudden death that age avoids with anxious care lurks in its every corner and claims not age, but me. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. Section 40 The Great Adventure by Helen Rudum To the Memory of E. W. T. One said, Death is a great adventure. It may be so, yet, being very young, I had not pictured death as my great quest. On the long road which lay before me, I did not see this unsuspected turning which I am forced to take. I had imagined many glowing quests, but at the end of each, life waited, crowned me, sent me on. Life the beautiful, life the renewer. I would not have them think I fear, or that I grudge this thing they ask of me. I stood upon the threshold of the world. I saw the radiance round time unborn, felt the faint stirrings of the life in it, knew, though I could not understand, that all I saw and felt belonged to me, and I was glad. Then in my hands that trustingly advanced, to take the gifts that time newborn might offer, I found a sword. In my young mind, which hardly yet saw clear to order rules of life, they wrote the rules of death. In my young heart, which had not yet lived long enough to know its mate, they placed an enemy, full grown. And where I looked for life, death stands, the great adventure. End of section. This recording is in the public domain. Section 41 Three Prose Poems by Helen Rudum From the French of Jean-Arthur Rimbaud 1. Fairy At the birth of Helen were present the saps of beauty, which flow in the untrodden shadows and in the still radiancy of the astral silence. The burning heat of summer was confided to songless birds, the indolence of summer to a bark made of griefs beyond price, moving through bays of dead loves and faded perfumes. This was after the time of woodcutters singing to the sound of the torrent in the ruined forest, the tinkling of sheep bells in the echoing valleys, the cries of the steppes. For the childhood of Helen, the thickets and the deep shadows trembled, the heart of the poor, and the legends of heaven were stirred. Her eyes are more lovely than all shining things. Cool airs that pass move not so lightly as Helen dancing. More precious is she than the joy of perfect beauty, than the joy of the perfect hour. Two, 
Childhood. One. This black eyed, yellow maned idol has neither family nor courtiers. More noble is she than a Mexican legend or a Flemish fable. The staring azure and greenery, which is her kingdom, runs along level shores, those shores which the shipless waves have called by names so ferociously Greek, Slav, and Celtic. On the forest verge, where dream flowers tinkle, glitter, and shine, sits the young girl with the orange lips. Her knees are crossed in the crystal flood, which wells up in the meadows, her nakedness clothed by the passing shadows of the rainbows, by the shadows of the flowers and sea. Ladies promenade on the terraces near the sea. There are infantas and giantesses. Stately negresses sit in the verdigris moss, jewels upright on the slippery ground of the shrubberies and the thawing gardens. There, too, are young mothers and grown-up sisters in whose eyes are countless pilgrimages, sultanas, princesses of haughty bearing and tyrannical costumes, little foreigners, and persons gently unhappy. How irksome is the hour of darling child and darling heart. Two. It is she, the little dead child, behind the rose bushes. The young mother, who is dead, comes down the flight of steps. The cousin's open carriage creaks over the sand. And there is the little brother. He is in India. There, in front of the setting sun, against the field of jilly flowers. And those old people who have been buried now stand erect in the wallflower rampart. A swarm of golden leaves surrounds the general's house. They are in the south. You must follow the red road to reach the empty inn. The castle is for sale, and the shutters have dropped off. The key of the church must have been taken away by the priest. Round the park, the park keeper's lodges are empty. So high are the palisades that one can see nothing but the rustling treetops. After all, there is nothing to see inside. The fields slope up to the villages, left empty of cocks and anvils. The sluices are open. Oh, the cavalries and the windmills in the desert, the islands and the hayricks. Magic flowers hummed all around. The gentle slopes lulled them to rest. Beasts of a fabulous elegance walked about. Far beyond, over the sea, that eternity of hot tears, clouds massed themselves. 3. In the wood, there is a bird. His song checks you and makes you blush. There is a clock which does not strike the hour. There is a bog in which is a nest of white beasts. There is a cathedral which comes down and a lake which goes up. There is a little carriage standing forsaken in the underwood. Or it comes down the path at a run, decked with ribbons. There is a troop of little actors in costume. One just sees them on the road which skirts the wood. And last of all, if you are hungry or thirsty, there is someone who chases you. 4. Finally, sing the praises of this whitewashed tomb with its bands of cement in relief deep under the earth. I sit with my elbows on the table. The lamp throws a bright light on these journals and uninteresting books. What an idiot I am to reread them. Far, far above my subterranean drawing room, the houses are taking root, the fogs are gathering, the mud is red or black. Monstrous town, unending night. 
not so high up are the sewers round about me nothing but the density of the globe perhaps gulfs of azure wells of fire perhaps it is on these plains that moons and comets seas and fables meet each other in my hours of bitterness i imagine balls of sapphire of metal i am master of the silence why is there a patch of palest light in the corner of the vaulted roof as though from an air shaft three dawn i have held in my arms the summer dawn nothing stirred yet in front of the palaces the waters were still the shadows had not yet left their encampments in the woods i walked awaking the brisk warm winds and precious stones gazed at me and wings rose around me noiselessly my first adventure was in a footpath already covered with splinters of fresh pale light where a flower told me her name i laughed at the waterfall which twisted its ragged way through the pines at the silver summit i espied the goddess then one by one i lifted her veils in the glade by a movement of my arms in the plain where i denounced her to the cock in the town she fled from me amongst the bell towers and the domes running like a beggar over the marble keys i pursued her i caught her at the top of the road near a laurel grove and through her heavy veils i just felt the weight of her immense body dawn and the child fell at the foot of the wood when we awoke it was noon end of section this recording is in the public domain End of Wheels, The First Cycle, recording by Newgate novelist Algie Pug, Eva Davis, and Nemo, 